Hey, welcome to San Francisco. I am Shun. Today, I will visit Brian Wong, CEO and founder of KIT. KIT, they provide self moments of achievements, amazing user experience. Since he was only 19 years old, he is really relentless really resourceful. Do you know what it means? You can make sense after watching this video. Started, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, first, so what is your background and what do you do now? Uh, so my background is I'm Canadian. Yes. I'm from Vancouver, Canada, mm -hmm. and I moved down to San Francisco in 2010, mm -hmm. so almost seven years ago. Yes. And I learned uh, design earlier, and then I became uh, on the business side when I took a, a degree in university. Uh, but I graduated university very early. So I yeah. skipped four grades and then I graduated university when I was 18 from the University of British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I started Keep after coming down here. Mm -hmm. So now I'm the founder and CEO of Keep, mm -hmm. uh, which is a rewards platform for mobile apps. Mm -hmm. From Canada to US, yeah, it's cool. And uh, please let me know more about your founding story. How did you come to the US after your graduation? So I realized it was about 2009, and so the economy was still a little slower uh, mm, because yeah, 2008 yeah. was yeah, a yeah, very bad rough. year. Yeah, yeah. And so I decided to go to San Francisco to meet a few companies just because I figured I could get a job here. Uh, so I met a company called Dig, D-I-G-G.com. Uh, Kevin Rose? Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, well, I met with uh, some of his team, and they decided to hire me. Uh, into business development. So mm -hmm. I was hired as a business development associate uh, in 2010. Mm -hmm. And that was my first job. Oh. So um, that moved me to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a visa as a result of that. Mm -hmm. And then I started working at DIG in January of 2010. Uh, July, around June, July of the month, uh, of the year, sorry, uh, the company started to do poorly. Mm -hmm. And then they started to lay people off. So I lost my job um, six months into, yeah, exactly. So really, really not that great. Uh, so I had no job, and so I decided to uh, to figure out what to do next. And usually when you have no job, you either try to find another job or you start a company. So for me, it made a lot of sense to, to try to start a company. Yeah. What is moment of achievement? So how did you get this idea? So the idea is quite simple. It was based on the fact that I noticed that mobile advertising was uh, left a lot to be desired. So the, the 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 ads when you see them on your phone are very very annoying. Right. So when you when you use your apps and then you play a game or you do anything, there's usually this annoying battery. So the big uh, sort of insight was how can we turn that into something less annoying? And so we we noticed it in these apps that you there were going to be these moments of achievement. So these are moments when you don't really, uh, uh, you have a pause, right? So you finish leveling up in a game, or you cross off a to-do, or you finish a run. These are moments that have a nice context to it, and it's a natural pause. So in those moments, we said, instead of putting an ad there, why not reward the consumer? Why not give them something that's rewarding and feels valuable? So that's how the idea was born, was to reward someone in these moments um, but to do it in a very respectful way. What experience of a kid brings to potential user of this again? Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's very uh, uh, delightful. It's designed to make you uh, not expect it, but rather have something that's a surprise. Uh, yeah, yes, so surprise. the experience of the consumer is designed to be a delight. Uh, we don't want them to try to earn points or to do something different. We just want you to play the game, use the app the way you would normally use it, and then something delightful would happen to um, make the experience a lot better. Yeah, yeah. 
what did you think about the uh, marketing in Japan? So, could you have a relationship with uh, the Disney College? But so, uh, what do you think more about uh, Japan? Do you think here? I think obviously the Japanese market is very exciting because there's a lot of mobile users. Mm, there's yeah. a lot of mobile internet access. Uh, the speeds of mobile access are mm. crazy. Uh, lots of digital products have done very well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm talking about way back in the day, like the Tamagotchi to now where you have Pokemon Go. <laughs> so you think about yeah, the yeah, concepts yeah. that came out of Japan mm -hmm. and the stickiness that it's had with users is very, very high. Um, you know, the thing about marketing though, really interestingly that we found was that uh, there's still a lot of reliance in Japan mm -hmm. on traditional uh, advertising. So mm -hmm. television, uh, billboards, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, print, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and yeah. display, and then you have dominant portals mm -hmm. like uh, Yahoo Japan mm -hmm. uh, and a few others that are very unique mm -hmm. that, and different than the US. Mm -hmm. So I think our progress in Japan has been a little bit slower than we expected. You know, when from the US you look at Japan, you go, oh my gosh, everyone's like super futuristic <laughs> and everyone uses like crazy technologies. That's the case, but then in terms of the advertising, I think it took a little longer to evolve mm -hmm. to the way that the consumer mm -hmm. was active in digital products as well. Um, so I think our partners with Digital Barrage and then with now uh, this company called Cheetah Mobile, which is uh, operating through Kingsoft in Japan, uh, is actually a very good mix of people that we can work with to continue to do more business. Uh, which is the most difference between Silicon Valley and uh, your country, Canada, or other countries? I think this area is obviously the original area, right? There's a lot of activity, there's the big juggernauts of the yeah. Googles and the Facebooks that were born out of this region. Obviously, the even more originals like the Intels and the Qualcomms, you know, things like that. But when you look at other regions now of the world, there's a lot more activity see and you can always create now when you start a healthy startup in most major cities in the world most major cities have very good startup incubation acceleration type services mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, venture capitalists have now found ways to fund startups in those regions so take tokyo and japan for example both tokyo and osaka uh, are key innovation centers and there's a lot of money that's being invested in and not only money from foreign vcs local vcs and then also companies right so but Docomo and Rakuten all have venture funds that invest in both local and foreign businesses. So um, there's a lot of uh, SoftBank, obviously. So you think about all these companies, um, most people don't even realize it, but they, there's a lot of Japanese money already flowing into American startups and then also into Japanese startups as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. How do you define the success? I think success is in the form of creating a movement yeah. that changes how people do things. It's really simple. Have you been able to create a movement that changes how people do things? That's very vague, but it means anything. It means anything from people's daily habits to how they do advertising, to how they consume advertising, mm. to how they use their devices, to how they commute. Mm. You know, so you think of the great entrepreneurs of the world, like Zuckerberg changed how we connect with people. Uh, Elon Musk changed how we uh, look at power and how we how we commute, um, and also how we send things to space. And so, just changing the way people do things is a very very important thing. Now, when you look at products that didn't necessarily succeed, um, there are things that didn't make an impact on how we do things. Right? They just appeared and they disappeared. Right? So you want things that change is how people do things. So your keep yes uh, makes a change. Yeah, it changes how people advertise, yeah. change how people yeah. consume and receive uh, advertising. Yeah. 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 Uh, what do you hope that Keep is a foundation in the future? I think Keep has a lot of opportunity as we grow into different categories. So we, we started off with smartphones, so we started off with people using apps and smartphones. We've been looking at connected devices. Mm -hmm. So imagine you're you're in a connected car, or you're using your connected thermostat. Oh, so let's say your car is about to run out of gas. You know, uh, Shell should be able to reward you with gas. So we look at the rewards uh, opportunity as being more than just within phones, but within a lot of connected devices. So we see a lot of opportunity within anything that's connected. It could even be a connected fridge or connected television. Uh, really, anything that's connected 
as an opportunity to potentially be rewarded uh, as part of what we're creating, which is essentially this rewards uh, technology that covers anything that you do on a daily basis. Uh, it can become part of the things that you do on your phone, on your PC, or even on your, your, your other connected devices. Mm, yeah, many, many things are connected by, yeah, keep, yeah. Finally, so please give me a message to next entrepreneur like you from other company. The country. Yeah. yeah, I think you know, have no fear, uh, get started. Uh, you know, I think the other thing is a lot of people have a lot of mental barriers. Mm. Uh, things that you come up with, like, oh, I don't know if I have the knowledge, or I don't know if I have the people who I can work with, or I don't know if I have customers, or I don't know if the product will work. Honestly, all these things can be overcome, right? So if you don't know anything or you don't have technical knowledge, you can learn it, right? So for example, you have General Assembly, Code Academy, all these uh, services yeah. online where you can learn how to code, right? So you have no excuse, that's first. Second is, oh, I don't you know, have the right people around you. If you don't have the people, start it yourself first. Mm -hmm. And if you have something that's really exciting, naturally people are going to want to join you and want to actually help you build this great thing. Um, and if you don't know if the product's right or if the people want it, just ask potential customers, email them and ask them, oh, is this something you would buy? It's not that hard. And, it, and they go, oh yeah, I would totally buy it. They're like, oh, it's not ready yet. That's totally fine. Like, you can totally ask people if this is something that they would want to buy and then use that as a starting point to go from there. So a lot of the things that once you break it down is the easiest step-by-step uh, -step process. The other thing is it's, it's, it's always about making it so that people actually want to believe in what you're creating. And this comes with your passion. If you don't have passion, if you don't have something where you walk into a room and you're yelling about it and you're super excited about it, why would anyone want to take away, uh, leave their job and then join you on this movement, right? You want to find someone who can actually uh, do that and that's only going to happen if you're very excited and passionate. Passion, yeah, what, what is the passion, yeah. Passion comes from energy, obsession, uh, never letting go, and being incredibly persistent. You know, the way that I got my Job, the way I started the company and, and found our first fundraising and our, our first uh, investors was to be incredibly persistent. Persistence is, again, not taking no for an answer, being in people's faces all the time. If you know you have a poor product that people want, mm -hmm. you will find someone. It's a numbers game. Uh, there are thousands yeah, of investors. Exactly, yeah. There are thousands. If you just give up after 10, you don't deserve to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. I know this is your style because so I saw that your uh, first, uh, foundation visit that uh, came out. You uh, met up with so many founders uh, to BCC email. So it's, I like your style to numbers, numbers. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's the most important. But yeah. you actually have to be smart, right? So like you have to have some intelligence, mm -hmm. a lot of grit, and a lot of persistence, yes. and a lot of passion. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is a lot of default advice. Like find something you're passionate about. The other thing is. I don't believe in you spreading yourself too thin. There's a lot of entrepreneurs that try to do like 17 things, right? Do one thing and do it extremely well and it'll become your passion. Because if you always half-ass five things, you will regret not putting all of your energy into one. Because if you're very talented, you put your energy into one thing, it'll succeed. There will be a way it can become successful. It's very good advice for me, yeah, uh, for listeners and yeah, some uh, for me. Yeah, let's go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.